Uh, so uh, welcome to, uh, to Burn the Ship Podcast. Burn the Ship Podcast is an entrepreneurial podcast really uh, built for small to medium businesses. Uh, and uh, we love to tell your story. We want to know what you do great. We want to know what you did, you, you, you struggle with in your business. We want to know how you got started. So first off, we're going to let you uh, introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, I'm, I'm Robert Harding. Um, I live out here in California. Uh, the company that I own right now is called Legacy Safety Solutions. And uh, it came off of, uh, so I was a safety director for a large general contractor in the safety industry. And just discovered that there was a lot of companies that are mid-size that were having lots of accidents, lots of injuries. There's t a lot of exposure and they didn't have a, a good resource for that because guys like us are expensive. And so you, the, the large companies can afford to hire a full-time guy because we're overhead. We don't, we don't bring any actual monetary money to you, but we do, what you do is we reduce your injuries and accidents and OSHA fines, but you don't get handed a check. Right? So a lot of companies have kind of like a, uh, a marker for like, Hey, if we hit, if we're a fifty million dollar company, that's our mark to, to get a full time safety guy. Okay, so all the companies that make less than that a year, they are just trying to do it in house. They're doing the best they can, but they're not doing a, a sufficient enough job to reduce their incidents and injuries. So uh, there was a, a large need uh, in our area, and so I kind of broke off, started Legacy Safety Solutions, and am doing the safety consulting in a way that is different than those that have done it before me. And those are currently doing it now. So, yeah, I know a few yeah. guys that, that are, are in the business that you're in uh, here in the Atlanta area. And uh, the way that the, the first guy that I ever met did this uh, was um, he said, you kind of got to look at it as uh, assurance or insurance ish for, for small to medium uh, um companies because they're not going to afford that guy but when they have a claim or something like that they're gonna they're gonna understand the need for what you do out there oh for sure and so the way you manage a claim um the way you manage an osha violation could uh you could be paying 50 percent more in what you wanted to pay if you don't have someone that's handling it correctly and so that's what we, we specialize in, A, is reducing your insurance claims, reducing your OSHA citations. But then what we really do, we're, 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 we, we're really more culture builders. So set, set aside safety. Safety is, in my opinion, the boring stuff. Regulations, safety books, OSHA. like that stuff. Just bore, yeah, OSHA. That stuff just bores me to death. Uh, and so what we do is we build cultures. So I tell my guys, like, you're not going there to be OSHA. You're not going there to be a safety cop. I come from the fire department before I got into this business. And at the fire department, everybody wants a firefighter. Everybody, you know, you, you everybody wants to see a firefighter show up. They do mm -hmm. not want to see the cops show up unless they're in dire, straight emergencies, right? But typically a firefighter shows up. We're going to solve the problem, solution, help them out. Um, and so I kind of take that approach to things where, it's all about building relationships with people. And if you can build strong relationships with your clients and your, your employees and things like that, the safety stuff comes with that. So because you could be a guy that goes out there and tells people what to do um, and is kind of like the safety cop and nobody's going to listen to them. Nobody wants them around. Um, you've already got that stigma. So one thing I tell everybody is you have to sell yourself first. If you can't sell yourself, you're not going to sell safety. And that's what we really are in. We're in the business of selling safety, getting people to buy in to a safety culture and get them to buy in, into the why. And, um, and that's why I say we focus on the culture. We focus on the people, you know, when you, when you uh, do your first like consultation uh, to these companies, uh, how surprised of the, the small and medium problems that, that you see right away when they, when you, when you name them, they're like, they're like, this is what I see. Well, how surprised are they? Uh, <laughs> they all know what's going on. Yeah. They just, they don't want to deal with it. Turn a blind eye. Turn a blind eye. <laughs> yeah. A lot of them know what's going on. And then, and then I kind of just elevate it to their attention and, and, um, 
sometimes you get the, um, well, we just, we just want to continue where we're going and we need you to reduce these things. Or you get the, Hey, we want you to come in here and revamp our culture. What can you do? How can you do it? What's your, what's your strategies and stuff like that. And so, uh, but people got to know it takes time. Like, uh, a company I worked for was Descore Builders, one of the kind of a mid-sized to larger general contractor in Sacramento. They had a really good foundation, um, really good group of people at that company. And we, when, when I came in, um, it was all about building relationships with the subcontractors and the people did that first. Then going for OSHA recognitions and achievements was really pretty. It wasn't that difficult because we already built the culture up where people uh, were bought into safety and they were doing the safety stuff and the good practices before before you showed up to a job site. They weren't just doing it because a safety guy was there. And so uh, that company is one example that has got the highest level of recognitions and safety that there is in the nation right now. Um, so and um, but that was the people. It's all about the people. If you don't have the people, you don't have the buy and their trust. You don't have because uh, they're the boots on the ground. I'm there for a split second. And the amount of time that they're on that job site, I'm there for a microsecond to try to make the most impact as I can. And then it's up and then it's up to the project team to continue that uh, that attention to safety and things like that. You know, sure. What what's the yeah. future? What, what are you what are you all looking at in the next say, two to five years? Atlanta, baby. There we go. <laughs> so lots, lots of traffic lots I, of traffic and construction going on here i can tell you that oh uh, i almost moved there like a year ago you, uh, me you messed up man you could be in the back <laughs> you could be in the battery right now watching the braves i know right and uh i almost moved there but yeah that, that traffic dude like we're i'm in california and our traffic um there are places that are that way but it's like la it's like sure you know uh, that was like LA on steroids in a small area. I was shocked, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. You, you got to know where to, you know, um, you know, being a, a really a B2B salesman at, uh, by trade, uh, you just got to know when to get out in it and when not to. Uh, and if you're, right. uh, you know, I feel sorry for the nine to five commuters because they're, there's no way to avoid it in that case. But, uh, you know, I will tell you this, there's, there's probably, if I'd had to guess, there's probably a big, a big need and gap to what you do out here because of everything that's going on. Um, you know, I know a, 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 a drywall company, he's probably less than, uh, probably less than 20 million a year. Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, he's always talking to OSHA. Um, and yeah. you know, he had to drive all the way down to, uh, to South Atlanta a few months ago. And he was like, man, my a guy on my crew was like, on the top realm of a of a ladder basically swinging on a a post to finish one part up and osha walked in uh -huh. while, he was, while he was doing that he oh, was yeah, like man it works. i can't w wait for that ticket to come in you know what i mean oh yeah S so you know i it is you, you know it is a culture it's it's a, a, a awareness of and changing business practices and patterns uh, and mm -hmm. that's, that's not a, you know, if you're used to something and then it comes in and changes, it's, it's going to take time to, to build anything. And that's in, in what you do and what a lot of other businesses out there do. Uh, so what do you, what do you feel like you do great at, uh, in, within your business and what do you feel like, Hey, uh, I could use some help. So I think, I think when it comes to safety, when it comes to people, I think we're doing great when it comes to being a new business owner going from being a safety guy to being a business owner and dealing with people and all their needs and wants. And you, you give them the world and then it's still not good enough. It's that is the most stressful part of this thing. Like I've never, I haven't dealt with this amount of stress uh, ever in my career until I started managing people though. I have great people. Um, I feel like their needs are just, just they're never a lot. Ending. They're a lot. They're a lot. Yeah. I mean, that's all I can say about it. They're a lot. I understand what you're, what you're, uh, what you're talking about. Um, what, when, when you, when you say that, um, to how, how long have you ha had the business? Uh, six months now. Okay. It'll, I've it'll, already been, it'll ease I've up. Already been sued. <laughs> it'll ease, it'll ease up. It'll ease up, uh, for yeah. sure. 
Uh, you bet. You definitely need to get your insurance policies uh, up, but it'll it'll <laughs> ease up. Yeah. You, you, what? And yeah. and and that's another thing is you're always looking for that next guy to replace you, and that's kind of the yeah. the only advice I I give people is always look for that next guy or girl to replace you, and mm-hmm. and that's going to be your 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 lieutenant, your right hand person, your right hand man or woman, and um, but don't pick them too fast. You know, yeah, people that's, have. That's what I went. That's what I went wrong. Is I I I picked super fast, mm-hmm. and it bit me in my, my butt because I I thought I, I thought I thought I knew them and didn't, and it's just it's been a pain. So, so yeah. yeah, I mean, like like I said, uh, the most expensive thing in your business is your is your employees and your people you pick. So. You know, I, I give that advice all the time, but it's because everybody's done it. I did, I did it early yeah. on. Uh, is is picking the wrong people, and and I, I just think that that's kind of the the burn the ship attitude. Is you get in there, you do it, you learn from your mistakes, and you move on, and and uh, mm-hmm. you know try to relieve the relieve that stress however you can uh, for sure because it's coming no matter what if you don't think oh, it's yeah, coming they're... you're going to be in a, a very rude awakening so yeah right. um but uh yeah it takes time people have to earn the positions and the money that they get or they won't appreciate it 100 percent. i think when i first started i just kind of it's easy to want to just give everything away Cause you're like excited and you're like, Oh, I want to bring this and do this and do that. And here you go. Here's that, that here's this and here's that. And, uh, and then my wife's like, Hey, you know, you haven't paid yourself in three months mm-hmm. and, but you're giving all this stuff away. And I'm like, yeah, but I want these people happy and we'll figure it out and throw it on another credit card and <laughs> whatever, you know, it's like yeah. these, these, uh, that I've learned kind of the hard way that, <clears throat> so that's the thing. I've never been a business owner. I've always been a really good employee, a really good <clears throat> safety manager, director, all that stuff. So all of these things, and I have a real big heart and giving heart. And like, sometimes I, 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 I act before I think. So like, I'll see a situation and I'll just be like, oh, here, here's the money or here's this or here's that. And then I, and then my, and then I have someone like my wife who's like, really, you did that that quick? The guy's only been working here for a month. I'm like, ah, you're probably right. <laughs> I would say, I would say to that, that that's not, that's not always bad. Uh, you don't want to do it a lot, but if you, like, I've done that a a decent amount of times in my career and the ones, the times that it turned out good, it turned out really good. And the cost of doing business on the other side to me is, Hey, I make, I make some mistakes, personnel mistakes, and it is what it is. But, you know, my big thing is, when somebody's about to make a life decision uh, or a monetary decision that works with me, I, I give them my advice and then allow them to make their decision um, because people are that we hire are old enough to make bad decisions. And mm-hmm. bad decisions, you learn more than you do good decisions. You don't learn on good decisions at all, if, to be honest with you. That, that's yeah. just like if you're a golfer, it's like you don't – it, once you think that golf shot was awesome, the next shot will be just really, really bad. If you're still thinking about that last one, <laughs> yeah, uh, it, you know, yeah, it, you know, you're just thinking that I hit it good and that's it. So it's the same thing in business. And there's a lot yeah. of translation with golf and that is you got to forget about the good ones, but or the bad ones for sure. But you got to forget about the good ones a, as well. But I, I would mm-hmm. say, you know, uh, contemplate, think about it more for sure. That's what I tell a lot of people is is. Um, I've given away. I've done a lot of things for my guys, um, and yeah. and I don't regret hardly any of them. Mm-hmm. Um, right, no, that's good. Yeah, and I don't I don't regret anything. It's just more of a, you know, I guess it, you get you kind of get hurt. I don't know if you've experienced this. You do something really good, and then you don't see the appreciation. And you're like, ah, oh, man, you know, <clears throat> that's kind of like I, I I don't know. I'm just a softy. <laughs> And I'm like, you know, you want, you, you don't see the appreciation and then you start seeing, they start feeling like entitled to more and more and more. A hundred percent. But I mean, I guess it's kind of, uh, um, what is your expectations of that? When you give that away, is it more, more loyalty? Do you want, um, confirmation that, that, that you did that? Uh, so I think setting the expectations for yourself is, Right. It's very important. Um, you know, uh, so 
Look, I'm in, I mean, I deal with salespeople a lot, so it's a little bit different of an animal. Um, yeah. Where I don't know if you're dealing with a lot of salespeople or just just uh, you know blue collar workers that are that you know and, and you know I, I like hiring athletes. Um, mm-hmm. That that's that's one of my biggest things is usually that they've athletes and and um, people that have a college degree have. have uh, They've done something that gives to their self uh, a really good chance in life and understands teamwork, right. understands appreciation. So, you know, again, I've hired people that I've that the bleeding heart is like, oh, they can make it. I did, but they had no chance, you know. And, yeah. and I made, and, and really, it was my mistake for 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 letting them even have a chance. I should have mm-hmm. known. Uh, but appreciation yeah. is good. But I feel like if I run my company correctly. Uh, the appreciation will come out in the work and the appreciation right. will come out in the paycheck at the end of the day. Cause that's what we're at the end of the day. We're the object of business is to win. Yeah. It's 100%. just like anything else in life. And if you don't go in to win, you're going to fucking lose. That's just it. So, mm-hmm. um, if I'm winning, if I'm in that, that win comes in different ways for different people. Right. Uh, sometimes it comes into, uh, that it's just a paycheck. That is a win for a lot of people. Uh, it's growth in the business that, that is, you're not actually getting a paycheck out of that, but you can see the growth in your sales. You can see the growth in, in, in a lot of different aspects and things. So, um, um, yeah, I, uh, appreciation as much, but I, I think the expectations of what you want for what you're about to give is important. Right. No, I, I, I agree a hundred percent. And I think, I think when, for me starting the company, you're kind of like just willy nilly, you're like trying to find all the parts and pieces and, you know, from HR stuff to insurance to, okay, hey, I'll give this guy this offer and this salary and this, this, and this. And before you know it, it's just a world. You got five, six, seven people underneath you. And, um, uh, one person says to another person, Oh, I got this offer from Robert, or I got this, or I got that. And next, you know, you're kind of like managing th- those, those con- little conflicts, you know? Sure. It's like, you know, so other than that stuff, you know, like, I think when it comes to what we do, um, and how we're doing it and, and the service we're providing, like a company. So if a company hires a full-time safety guy, you're spending, when you payroll taxes, everything included to hire that guy. It's like 150 grand easy. Okay. Now, especially out here in California, it could be more. Um, but when you hire us for sometimes a quarter of that cost, you're getting five guys helping your whole company out. And so that's where people are really enjoying this is they get, uh, you get all walks of life. We have guys that are, have three guys that are bilingual because out, out here, especially it's, you know, the workforce is predominantly Hispanic. So, mm-hmm. um, and, and there's just not a whole lot of bilingual, really good bilingual safety guys running around. Sure. So you get that, you, uh, you get all the training and education. Uh, but then like, so when someone hires legacy, that company doesn't see legacy on their job site. You don't see a legacy shirt, a hat, nothing. If you, if you're ABC contractor, we're wearing ABC contractor gear, we're representing you to your clients as your full-time safety team, get to your insurance company, to your clients, to everybody. Sure. And so that's what people are really enjoying is the fact that, wow, you know, I could have bought one guy, but I purchased three or four guys. And as we continue to grow, we may have 10 people on staff and all those 10 people are available to that company at any point in time that they would need all 10 of us, you know? Well, that's so awesome, man. Well, doing. I really appreciate you uh, coming on. I, I want to learn more about you and, and your journey for sure. Cause six months, I like to say, let's talk in another year. Cause it's good. Yeah. We're going to, we're going to have a way different conversation uh, and oh, yeah. I, I, I love young entrepreneurial people that, that just kind of literally burn their ship and jump off the, the cliff, if you will, and, and get to it and, you know, take your bumps and bruises. But tell everybody uh, out there uh, that, that might be watching this, uh, uh, how to get a hold of you. Yeah. So if you want to reach out to me, um, you know, it's uh, the website is uh, www.legacysafetysolutions.com. Uh, we're on Instagram. We're on uh, LinkedIn. Um, you can reach me. Uh, can I get my personal number? My business. If you number want to, this on is on this? you. Yeah, just because we're kind of we're we're going to be spreading nationwide. So we're going to be going from, from here in a few months. We'll be in Texas, 
establishing legacy. And then from Texas, we're actually planning to come to Atlanta. So nice. Um, Cause I got some connections out there, but anyways, um, so we're, we're able to go anywhere. We fly all over the United States right now. For the most part, people call us in to assess their companies or come do a week out here to help us out, whatever it may be. But anyways, so it's a 916-751-6105 is uh, my personal contact number. So if you want to get in touch and pick our brains about safety or how we can help you guys out um, or even starting a new company, because like like you're saying, burn that bridge, uh, burn that uh, that ship, right? Burn the ship. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, yeah. So. For me at Descor, I was a part owner of the company. I had everything set up, laid out, and I could have stayed there for 20 years and been happy. But I had this desire to start a company, and um, it was scary. It was fearful. I had some dark, sleepless nights. The one thing that came to me was, which I would, if anyone's going through that, is all of the treasures in life are on the other side of the unknowns. So if you have that unknown in front of you and you're like, I want to do this and I'm passionate about it, but there's all these unknowns and it's scary. Walk into that darkness because on the other side of that is all the treasures when it comes to not just financially, but personal growth and, you know, your growth for your life will be there. So I just want to share that. Couldn't say it better myself. That's uh, that's that's absolutely good. Um, and, and at the end of the day, you know, uh, this life's full of second chances. It really is. Um, oh, totally. Yeah. If it doesn't work, I promise you, you'll find a job doing the same exact thing from somebody <laughs> that's like that guy or that girl had the guts to do it. So you know that they're good at what they do because they went and tried to do it on their own. So they're definitely right. good at the job, and maybe yeah. they'll get a second chance later on to do it again. So I'm, I, I would absolutely hire somebody that 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 uh, that possibly didn't make it for one, one for one reason or another. Um, I mean, I failed in a few businesses in my early ages. So, um, you know, it, it is what it is. Uh, you just yeah. got to pick up the yeah. pieces. So thank you. I appreciate you coming on uh, Burn the Ship. And, uh, you know, everybody be kind to each other out there. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Thank you very much for having yeah. me. I appreciate it.